welcome back to my channel and thank you for joining me today. I want, felt like colouring in Rita Berman's um, spring book and um, so I thought I'd just come on here and share with you um, my process of colouring it in really. I'm going to be using my Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura pencils, both wet and dry in certain areas and I may even be using my Tombow Dual brush pens for this page. I'm going to be starting with the water first. I like to start with my most um, challenging part of, an, of a page first. Um, I don't like to leave those right to the end most of the time if I can help it. So... I find the water in this image, because it's covering quite a large area, it, I find it, um, it'll make it easier for me if I colour in the water first to see the rest of the page and decide what I'm going, what colours I'm going to use on it. So for the water, I will be uh, using my Albrecht Dura's with water, with, I'll be using my water brush to blend the colours together. So I'm not really doing much blending, I'm just sort of laying down the colour. I'm just creating the dark areas around the stones. Um, so those will be the areas of the shadows for me. I'm really not spending time making this too neat because um, the water will blend all the pencils together. I'm not going below here because I think that's underwater so I'm going to try and maybe make that look a little bit different to the top. I'm going to go in with a lighter shade now. Um, middle of Palo Blue. lightest shade I think I'm going to use sky blue I don't know what I'm going to do with this area yet does it look like it's underwater yeah maybe with the bubbles so I might try and it's a little bit confusing to me might try and do it the same color let's see all right so I'm just going to darken some of the areas around the rocks
So let's see what happens. I'm going to go in with my water brush. I'm going to start from the light areas because I have the tendency to go quite dark with all my colours and not leave enough white on a page so, so that I don't pull the dark blues down. I'm just going to go from the light to the dark. cleaning my brush off because obviously as I go into the dark areas it picks up all the darker blues so if I didn't clean it off then I'll pull those dark blues I'll if I leave any dark blue on the brush it'll go onto the lighter areas so I keep dabbing the brush onto the I'm not using that much water actually um, I haven't dipped it in water since we first started applying the water yet. So there's not that much water on my brush. I've not filled the... I don't think my brush is working very well, so I haven't filled the um, water brush with water. So I'm just using it like as if it's a normal toothbrush. I mean, a normal um, paintbrush at the moment. I have toothbrush on my mind. I was struggling with my two-year-old this morning, trying to get him to brush his teeth. Um, I think his teeth have been hurting since yesterday. Um, poor thing. Bless him. He doesn't complain that much about anything, really, but I could tell that he's... He was quite under the weather yesterday. Fortunately, it didn't affect his sleep or anything like that. brush works well but I also tend to use um, previously I used to use the I think I prefer it the Tombow dual brush pen blender pen um, do I have it here yeah so that's the Tombow dual brush pen uh, it doesn't have any color it's a colorless blender it has the brush tip as well as a bullet tip on the other end um, and I also have the Derwent blender pens um, which are like that um and that's what the nib looks like i prefer um my tombow jewel brush pins to be honest I, I really like how the brush uh nib works so i tend to um well i use a combination of both but i think i prefer my tombow jewel brush pins how they work so you can use that for blending watercolor pencils too which works really well um I just find it easier to clean it. I feel the blender pens tend to pick up a lot of color from the pencils. So to clean them off and make them completely colorless again, it takes a little bit longer than you, the water brush, which is why I tend to use my water brush. But it's a good option, especially for small areas, um, to use a blender pen with your watercolor pencils. I'm sure it would work on any other watercolor pencil too if you didn't have the Albert Dura. So for like areas like this, I've used the blender pen. Uh, you get the Derwent one comes in two sizes. There's a smaller size as well. And it comes in a pack of two. Um, so the bigger size and the smaller size. So you could use the smaller one or the brush tip, Tombow brush tip uh, blender pen would go into these areas really well because they go into small areas. 
All right, I will come in and I'm going to let that dry a bit. You can see nothing goes through and the paper is barely buckled. Well, I don't see any buckling actually. Um, so it's good paper uh, in Rita Berman's books. Now, I'm going to let that dry because I am going to go in with pencils. So I'll try and figure out what I'm doing here. I think I'm going to use a, shades with a little bit more green. Um, just to differentiate, would that work? Let's see. Let me pull out some pencils and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back with some pencils. Um, I've gone for some like turquoises. So I've got a helio turquoise, a chromium green opaque, so that's green, uh, earth green <laughs> and cobalt green. Um, and I'm going to try and make it darker on the bottom going up light i hope this works let's see i've not used this combination before especially the greens these particular greens mixed with the turquoises so let's see so i'm going to start with the helio turquoise Chromium green opaque. So it doesn't take me too long. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this little section, show you how I do it, and then I can do the other bit, but the rest of it. Um, exactly the same way off camera so let me try and do this bit so we see how it looks before I well not that I can change it now but before I go ahead and do the rest of it all okay so I'm gonna go in with my earth green Let's try adding the water now. Going in with my water brush again.
Okay, so I'm going to do exactly the same for the rest of it, the underwater section, and then um, I'll be back. Okay, guys, so I'm back. It looks a little bit messy, but that's because um, I was doing it fast and I still will go in with my pencil. So that's still a little bit wet. So I'm just going to show you this area here. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit more um, pencil. So on the top here, what I started to do, and I forgot to turn the camera on, was I'm adding a little bit of the Corbett green again just to darken up underneath that line which is going to be the um should i make it that line that's going to be the surface of the water And then I'm going to darken up the bottom with my dark indigo because we've used quite I've used quite a bit of water. It has gone. It has. It's just buckling a little bit, but that's no problem. Once you close the book and put a bit of weight on it, it it will flatten out. Or you can iron it. Um, obviously, put some a clean towel, for example um cloth on top so that you don't burn the page don't go directly on with the iron and because it's quite a lot greener than the surface water I thought I'd add hints of a little bit of green onto the surface water as well. And just maybe in the shadow areas, add hints of it. I don't need to put too much but if we add a bit of hints of it so at least a little bit of the green that's underwater comes up to the surface we can even add a bit of that light cobalt turquoise and yeah when i was doing the watercolor here i went over all of these leaves with the with the water brush because they're quite tiny and um, I thought anyways for those leaves I'll more than likely bring in a little bit of glitter gel pens and do them in glitter gel pens so I don't mind um, I didn't mind painting over them so that's why they look green already So I'm going to go away and finish this off exactly how I'm doing. So I'm just going to darken up underneath that line there to mark where the surface is and where the underwater is. I'm going to darken up with my dark indigo around the pebbles or sorry, the rocks like that. And I'm going to be adding in some deep cobalt green just to give hints of greenness to the surface of the water as well so that it doesn't look so different from the underwater. And I might add, like I said, a little bit of the light cobalt turquoise in some areas. So it's a light color. So in lighter areas, you can just add in a little bit of that light cobalt turquoise. So that, again, you're getting a little bit of hints of the turquoise green sort of effect uh, on the surface of the water as well. Okay, so that's done so I like I said I added the darkening around the rocks I added a little bit of hints of the deep cobalt green a bit of hints of the light cobalt turquoise and the dark indigo on the bottom and usually I don't do my white Posca 
uh, details right till the end of completing my picture but I just wanted to see how this transition or the surface of the water and the underwater looks so I'm just going to do a little bit of white post cutting now so that I can see that um, if I have any paint left in this pen yeah um, so I can see what it looks like so for now I'm happy with that and we can move on to something else all right so the next thing I want to do is the sky to get that done and then we can concentrate on the foreground I think I'm going to use soft pastels because I want the sky to be a bit more subtle so that everything else looks more vibrant against the background I was thinking of doing a gradient with the soft pastels going from yellow to pink. So maybe green going into yellow and then into pink. Maybe we'll do that just to bring in a little bit more color because we'll have a lot of greenery from the leaves. Um, my reeds are going to be a brownish yellow. The otter is going to be brown. So maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll go for green going into yellow into pink. Okay, so I have my soft pastels here. I've got the earth green yellowish, the Naples yellow, the dark flesh, the light magenta, and I just added a light purple pink in case we need to darken up the pink. Hopefully it's not going to be too bright, but because soft pastels lay down quite subtly, so hopefully it won't go too bright. Now usually I would do my soft pastels at the end of coloring in because once you've laid down pencil I'm covering this side of the book so that I don't get the soft pastel all over that although I will be able to erase it if necessary um, sorry yeah so if you have already done your pencil work so done your foreground um, it's easier to do the soft pastels because the pencils resist the soft pastels and so they won't cover over the pencil. However, I am going to probably be using, I haven't fully decided, but I am probably going to be using my Tombow Duo brush pens um, as a base. And I don't cover the entire base with pencil usually. Um, I, I, I tend to leave highlighted areas of the pen without pencil over the top and because of that the soft pastels will not be resisted by the tombos and therefore um they will it'll make the tomb the tombos look quite dull so because i'm using the tombos i'm doing my soft pastels best I think it's more work doing them before putting down your pencil because I'm going to have to erase certain areas like the bird. Like I don't mind the certain colors going over certain areas like the green going over the leaves because I can color over that. So it acts like a base, but I do mind it going over areas which I don't want a green shade to it. So I will have to go in with an eraser just to clean up those areas, but that's okay. It's because I want to use my tombos on this page. now I'm going to try and go in with my yellow, the Naples yellow. So I'm just using the same uh, cotton but a different part of it to use there to apply the yellow. Okay, and then 
I'm just going to fold this over and um, apply the dark flesh. Now, with the pencil, the pencils, the Faber Castell pencils, Polychromos or Albrecht Dura, um, match up with the pastels as well, which is why I have the Faber Castell pastels. You can use any; these work as well as other ones. So this is a light magenta. I pull, pulled out two pinks. So the lighter one was the light magenta. So I'm going to use a little bit of that light purple pink, but I'm try I'm going to try and just use it in the corners and right at the edge of the page. I'm going to show you how I erase. Um, I should have taken my eraser out. You have a couple of options. You can use an electric eraser, for example. Um, I like using the neat. Is it the needable? Yeah, the needable art eraser. So I've got a Faber Castell one um, here. And you just make sure you get a clean area. So just sort of press it. Get it to the size you want to get it. You can, you know, roll it around, squeeze it into a point to get into tiny areas. I find it does usually pick up. Let's hope it does on camera. But I find that it usually does really pick up color. So if I show you, for example, let's say here, you can either you just press down like that or you just do that and it erases. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to do it on camera because you guys will get bored. So I'll be really quick. I just want to erase off the the reeds. I'll probably leave the um the leaves the way they are. Maybe the flowers because I haven't decided what color to do the flowers. I'm not going to bother erasing off the pebbles because they'll probably be a gray or a brown. And so it'll cover up the green. Um, so again, just the flowers. Okay, so I've done the erasing. I erased the flowers and the reeds. And there was some on the on the bird and I erased um, that pastel off as well. Now, a friend of mine had requested me to show how I did a background. I recently did a, I posted a picture on Instagram, probably two posts back now, where I did a soft pastel background, used a stencil to erase out circles. Um, so I... I'm not going to put circles on this one, but what I'm going to do is I might try and erase out and um, create clouds um, by doing the erasing effect. So if it doesn't look good, I'll just go over again with my soft pastel. So shall we try and put in some clouds, maybe a little bit, maybe not too much. Um, I'm just using my Derwent electric eraser. I've just changed the eraser tip to a new one because my other one was really short. And I haven't thought this through, but I'm just going to try and create. So maybe what I'll do is I'll do the outline. Yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the outline because otherwise it'll take ages. So I'll do the outline of the clouds with the electric eraser, then maybe use my kneaded eraser to do the inside.
Now, usually with soft pastels, you should put workable fixative over the top if you're still working on the page so that your soft pastels don't get everywhere. So I would recommend doing that if you're happy with the result of uh, what the page looks like now, because you won't be able to remove anything once you put the fix uh, the fixative. Make sure if you are going to use fixative, use a workable one so that you don't end up um, not being able to colour over the top. Yeah, make sure you've done everything and make sure your page is clean and everything before you spray your fixative. I think that's fine. So that gives you an idea of how if you wanted to uh, create some shapes, if you wanted to do sun rays, if you wanted to do bubbles or you can do any amount of erasing before the fixative that you want to do to create certain shapes and um, so that's how I've done the clouds all right so I'm going to clean up my desk now because I've got um, eraser dust everywhere I've got soft pastels everywhere so I'm going to clean it up before we get back into the page I'll be right back Okay, so I'm just going to do a little bit of Tombow basing um, just to show you how I would use my Tombows sometimes in a page like this. I know I've done a video on how I use them on a busy page, but um, even in a simple page, they can be used quite well. So I'm going to do maybe the reeds first and I'm going to be doing them brownish yellow. So the shades I'm going to go for, for the Tombows first, is the 090, which is Lemon Cream, and 026, which is Yellow Gold, okay? And I'm going to try, you cannot blend, on normal colouring books, you can't blend directly onto the paper because um, they won't blend well. It's not the right paper for the markers, and they could end up going through. So one technique I do tend to try and use sometimes instead of just basing with one color is to try and use two colors a light and a dark to create a sh shading effect already and then go in with my pencils so one way of doing that um is taking your two colors the lighter color um which is the 090 i would hold it um I i'm going to use the tip to tip method so i'm going to put the darker color to the lighter color with the darker colour being on the top and the lighter one being on the bottom, okay? And that will transfer some of the dark colour onto your light nib. And then with that, I'm going to just apply the colour, going starting with an area that is going to be a dark area. So according to the dots, let's do it on this one first. According to the dots that Rita Berman has applied, this would be the dark area. So the yellow I'm using is actually quite a light yellow and you'll see the gradient form. You have to work quite fast because if you colour in just one area um, for ages with water-based markers, they will go through. But if you see, um, it hasn't gone through now. So that's how you would do it. But you don't just keep colouring on the same spot for ages. Another way of doing it is applying the dark colour to your palette and then you can pick up the color with the light marker and then go in again um, just make sure I have enough and color sorry that's my son just give me one second sorry about that I'm back um, my son's been a bit poorly since he came back from uh, daycare today so um, he was a bit needy, but he's fallen asleep again. He was supposed to be taking his nap right now. Um, so yeah, I'm going to show that again. And it will look streaky. They're water-based markers. And that's why I don't always um, just leave it um, coloured as it is with markers only I will go over the top with pencils so that's um the reeds and I'll show you how I do the leaves now so you just clean off your your light 
uh, pen just to make sure you've taken off all that color but I'll do that for all the reeds and I'll show you um, the shades I will use for the leaves um, I've got 131 which is lemon lime and I have 126 which is light olive all right so I'm going to do exactly the same thing so you can do the tip to tip method just always have the dark on the top and the bottom so the gravity sort of helps the color come through and depending on how long you touch them together the darker the the or the more color the light will pick up from the dark And if you think it's still going to be too dark, then you can always erase a little bit and then carry on so that you get your lighter shade where you want it. Yeah, so it gives a little bit of the darkness. And then when you go over in the pencil, it will show up even better. So. There we go. So you can see a bit of a gradient, hopefully. Um, created by just the pens um, so hopefully that gives you another idea of how to use the tombos I'll do one more all right so I'm gonna go and base my uh, grass blades and my reeds and I will be back so my reeds and my grass blades have been based and I thought I'd also base my stones. I think I'm going to go for a grey. So I'm going to use again a Tombow, but I'm going to use my water brush to apply it so it's not too dark. Um, the colour is N79, which I think is a warm grey. I'm going to show a little bit of shading with pencils for the grass just to show you how I go about doing that. Um, so I'm going to use chromium green opaque. Now remember again you've put down some color so you don't need to use a lot of pencil now to go over the top. You don't need to go hard because the, paper, the white of the paper has already been covered. Um, so, yeah, you just go in and put a little bit more, usually darkness to it, depending on the shades that you've used, um, to give the, the shadows. So that is chrome oxide green.
it looks a little bit empty to me there so what i might do is add some flicks of grass actually with pencils so if i show you this page here for example where i've done the the flicks just to add a little bit of um grass behind what's there already I'm going to do the otter now. I'm not going to do this um, otter realistic. I think in Rita Berman's books, I like to keep my animals quite simple. And so I think in this case, I'm just going to stay um, quite simple, not do any fur.
so the otter is done now i need to bring in some i feel like i need to bring in some color so i think for the bird i'm going to go with bluish purple um just to brighten things up a little bit on this page now so i'll go for the blue violet I'm going to use the blue violet uh, to give a little bit of a purple effect and then I'm going to use ultramarine blues. So for now, I think I'm going to leave those patterns. I'm going to see what colors. I think I'm going to be bringing in pink, yellow, maybe uh, for the fish, maybe pink for the flowers. And then I'll see if I want to add a bit of pink in there, whether I'm just going to do glitter gel pens or just come in with those same pencils again.
sorry guys, I seem to have lost some uh, footage. I Maybe I ran out of space on my phone, so it didn't, um, the video didn't uh, work properly. But I thought I was doing this one on camera, but unfortunately it didn't save. Um, so I'll just tell you the colours I used for that. I used the medium purple pink. Um, I'll show you the swatches, that's probably better. The medium purple pink, um, the light magenta is the light pink, a red violet, um, just darkening the areas there. And then from the bottom up, I used dark indigo, um, light ultramarine and sky blue. And then I used a white um just for the transition area so those are the colors i used for that fish there and then i brought i decided to bring in those pinks the same pinks up to the flowers here um so i just did a few to show you how how i'm going to be doing them so i went in first with the middle purple pink from the shadow area then the light magenta and the red violet i just added a little bit in the shadow areas and i'm doing the same with the same three pinks in these areas here on the bird just to bring a little bit of color but i think the rest of the bird which i've left white other than the beak we need to do the beak um but that area and the little bit on the tail i think i'm going to use glitter gel pens probably just in blues just to give it a bit of sparkle and not add too much craziness to that bird uh, so i've already placed the middle purple pink and the red violet so i'm going in with my light magenta now I think that's a decent place to stop. I can finish off um, the little bits and pieces and I'll be back with um, some glitter gel pens, my Posca. Okay guys, so I'm back with lots of glitter gel pens and my Posca.
so guys, I hope you liked this. I love colouring in Rita Berman's books. Um, they just bring me so much joy. I really enjoyed colouring this page and showing you how I was going to go about doing it. And there was a lot of thinking on this one. I didn't really plan this page. I do sometimes, majority of times I plan my pages, but not... Um, always and a lot of Rita Berman's books I don't I just have a couple of elements on the page I know what color I want to do and then I just go for it and I think that's why I really enjoy coloring her pages so I know there was a lot of thinking from me um during this video but I hope you didn't mind that and I hope you guys like the outcome I think I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out um so yeah I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you again very soon with another video. Until then, bye-bye.